What's up, everybody? Welcome back to day two. We are here again with Lisa McCormick. Lisa, welcome back. Thanks so much. I'm so excited to be here on day two. I know it, everything went so cool yesterday. Um, I'm sure a lot of you, I'm seeing a bunch of you there. Uh, we're here yesterday and got to see everything we did. Uh, we're doing graphic design, actually more like on the packaging side, but you're bringing in a really cool twist with Fresco, right? Tell us a little bit about what we're gonna, what we did yesterday and what we're going to do today. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, we're doing packaging design for a cider um, label. So on, it'll be on a can. Um, and this is actually a real product. So this is a real client that I have. So um, you can actually Pressure's you'll be able on. to. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I, did, I got their permission. Don't worry. But, um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we'll uh, yesterday we did um, a can called Sage Advice. So uh, I drew some different um, like little stickers for that and made a fun wrap, but you can watch the um, playback. And today we'll be doing um, a, a cider can called Feel the Beat. So um, <laughs> it's going to be quirky and fun. Um, I have I have some things up my sleeve for everyone. So. I got a little sneak peek at that. <laughs> and uh, what's really even cool too is it was from the chat kind of voting for uh, a few flavors. And this one won it, kind of like in flying colors there. Uh, and it was like, I think more more people probably chose it because when you described it, it sounded like more of a challenge for you. Right. It's like you're mixing in like these, the old 80s exercise theme and everything. So of course, chat's going to say, yeah, do that one, right? Right. You want to see, <laughs> see what I come up with for that. <laughs> exactly. Uh, if, for those that didn't tune in yesterday, shame on you. But also tell them a little bit about yourself, where you're from and what you do. Yeah, so my name is Lisa, and um, I go by the name Made by Lisa Marie. So you can find um, my stuff on the internet by um, under either Made by Lisa Marie or my Behance is Lisa McCormick. But Instagram website is all Made by Lisa Marie, and I'm an illustrator, graphic designer, and artist um, based out of Chicago. And I do everything from like a lot of like apparel and merchandise design. Um, to I've been doing a lot of packaging design lately as well, which is what we'll be doing today, um, and also some painting. So a little bit of a little bit of everything. <laughs> Ooh, yeah! Just as you said that, I found some of the paintings. So I'm assuming this is one of them here. Yeah, yeah. So I do actually work with um, like a fine art company, and um, I I do some some oil painting tutorials as well. Oh, so, that's great! You know, just... That's excellent. <laughs> it's really neat too. I I'm I'm a big fan of seeing in particular Behance profiles, where you look at them and you can almost automatically get the idea of who this artist is, what they do. And, and you know, with so many businesses now flocking to Behance to look for talent, I think that's a really strong thing. Do you find um, folks kind of chime in or find you on Behance? Absolutely, yeah, it's been a really great, um great portfolio place. Um, I definitely feel like a lot of art directors hang out on yeah, Behance. Yeah. Which is I've Very been noticing convenient. that too. Yeah. It's kind of interesting, right? Yeah. So that's awesome. And I think too, like I think it gives it it's a the because of the 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 layout being so familiar and everything, it gives the work a chance to shine where, you know, I think in some cases your website and everything, you're being so salesy. But I love the idea here of like that first impression. I'm like, this is if this is what I'm looking for, you can show it off on Behance pretty well, you know? Absolutely. And that's what I love about, I feel like even being an artist, it's like, I feel like you don't have to necessarily sell yourself. You can just yes. be like, here's what my work looks like. You know, like, if you like it, let's talk. If not, that's okay. Yeah. You know, it's, it's very visual. So exactly. Um, yeah. Very cool. Well, before we get started with day two, want to make sure you guys check out the second week of the new Photoshop daily creative challenges with Howard Pinsky. It's every weekday at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Don't miss out on his new set of challenges. Some really great stuff there as well. Um, let's get into it. Um, so recap of yesterday, we did the um, sage advice, right? Yeah. And we took it all the way from showing a sketch, getting it into fresco, making some cool stuff, importing it into Illustrator, and then right into Photoshop, making some mockups. We're going to do kind of the same thing today, but a whole new, a whole new uh, variety. Absolutely. Yeah, that's pretty much my workflow. Um, since I, I am an Illustrator kind of at heart, even when I do graphic design stuff, I still yeah. manage to start with drawing no matter what and uh, incorporate a lot of illustration work into it. So Great. yeah, today we'll be doing the same thing. We're jumping right on into Fresco here um, and kind of just so that uh, the audience can kind of follow along. Um, 
I'll write out what the uh, can design is called. So it is called Feel the Beat, which is kind of my prompt um, <laughs> <laughs> for what what that will look like. And then yes. it has. Um, let's see, pomegranates and beets are the main ingredients. And I always second guess how to spell pomegranate. Is it pom? Ooh, that's a good one. I okay, I think that is that. I I, I looked it up a couple times to like make sure. Um, uh, let's take a quick look here. So it's P O M E G R A N A T E. Okay, I think I got that right. That's perfect. Yeah, that's one of those ones I'm always like, I'm it's it's pops up on spell check every time. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm like, is it an I or an A? I think it, yeah, whatever. Um, so that's that's pretty much what we're working with. So um also as like I'll be this can is is a limited edition release, so it'll be um released in January. So as okay. I was kind of talking about yesterday, I kind of like to also take my cues from like uh the time. So um the, uh, like the time of the year, the season. Yeah. I mean. Um. So January, it's winter. Um. This is supposed to be kind of like a, uh, you know, New Year's resolution. Um. You, like, twenty twenty one is over. We're starting twenty twenty two. Everyone's hitting the gym again. <laughs> you know, that's where yeah. my mind went at least. And kind of doing this like fun, quirky, um, idea of having. Uh, well, this is what the first thing that popped in my head was having pomegranates and beets working out and kind of yeah. doing like a cheesy, funny, like eighties workout video. So, um, yeah, really just having fun with it. So this is, uh, this is, I did a little bit of homework and, um, again, drew out, <laughs> uh, some sketches for what I was picturing in my head. So we have our beat with, um, <laughs> in a leotard with some dumbbells, uh, looking really excited and happy about, I don't even, I don't know if they're doing lunges or what's going on. It's so um, perfect. I love it. <laughs> and then a pomegranate doing some weightlifting. Um, so yeah, these are, this is, this is, uh, kind of my initial inspiration of what I'm picturing for yeah. this can to be. I figure if you're going to have a hard cider on January 1st, it might as well be packed with a ton of antioxidants, right? <laughs> right? Yes, it has to. So, and then also uh, we'll be doing some bright colors because again, I kind of want to actually combat the dreary January dead of winter vibes and kind of give people a kickstart. Yeah. To get motivated to be back in the healthy lifestyle. Yeah. So the idea with this too, like, do you have, um, I know our, the one yesterday had some really cool, uh, things that were bringing in like copy and inspiring kind of, um, uh, sayings and stuff. Do you think you might do the same with this one a little bit too? Oh, with like words and stuff. Um, yeah. I, it, it, I wasn't thinking that, but I'm open to it. If, yeah. Uh, I, if it even if it's right. almost like, even if it's almost like kind of, um, kind of swirling around or something, something to think about maybe it, if we're there. Cause I think there's so much to do. We talked about it yesterday with copy and oh, great yeah. copy and great design working together. Um, it's, and it's kind of that like, you know, double whammy that a designer can do, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, know that's Go a really for good it. call. I'll have to think of stuff, but yeah, so this is basically it. Um, and then, uh, I'll, I can show everyone for those that weren't here yesterday. This is kind of, um, the template. It, this is a rough sketch. We'll actually, design it in Illustrator, but that's kind of uh, what the front of the packaging design looks like. So I have that as a reference point. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to jump in and start actually uh, making these illustrations. So let me get Great. back to that. Um, there we go. And yeah, let's do this. So one of the cool things Lisa showed us yesterday was she's got a good workflow going because these cans are a series. And so she knows exactly what are the fixed spots on the can and where she can have the free kind of open canvas to kind of mess around and, and get the creativity going. Exactly. Exactly. Feel the beat. I love it. And all, so, so again, too, like even just like we were talking about the color choices and everything. It's so neat to be able to pull from the reference and have an idea up front. And a lot of times all these things kind of just come into play because they there are specific colors that you can find in really good reference and things, you know? Yeah, totally. And I was even kind of picturing again, I'm not really sure exactly how this will end up, but I want to kind of really play with colors to um, give it like a fun 
jumpstart kick to people of, um, at least in being in Chicago, when I think of January, I think of everything is kind of gray um, yeah. and cold. And so kind of uh, combating that a little bit with color yeah. um, and just getting people, um, yeah, just a fun, excited kick of energy. That's great. You know what we didn't show yesterday, but I think it would be cool to show uh, the three brushes that are are in fresco and why you're mm. using the one that you're using. Good call. Yeah. So the first one is a set of pixel brushes. So, um, I mean, I think I have hundreds. Literally, this mega pack has 319. Wow. Um, these are all the different texture brushes. Um, they're they're really really great. I actually did a children's book. Um, a year or two ago um, using a lot of these textures um, because I mean, look at that. How fun is that? Yeah. Um, there's lots of lots of cool textures. Um, the second one is a live brush panel, um, which this is where there's watercolors or oil um, brushes, which is also really fun um, since I actually, I um, as I was kind of talking a little bit earlier, I do a lot of, of like oil painting and, yeah. and watercolors and actually teach that as well in workshops. Um, and this really does do a really great job of impersonating um, those brushes. So if you even like zoom in, you can see there's almost like this canvas texture, yeah. um, which is super cool. And you can, um, you know, even blend and mix colors and um, it's really amazing actually like it's like you consider it it's still wet like it has not dried right. so there's still the ability to blend and transform it um, which is just it's, it, I remember seeing that for the first time I think when they previewed it at Adobe Max or something and everyone was just it's their insane. jaw dropped right because you're like that's <laughs> you're you one step closer to the real thing you know it's right. pretty amazing yeah, yeah. It's, it's so cool um, yeah, I actually did do an, like a digital oil painting that I posted on my behance, yes. which I think you pulled up in the beginning, which yeah, it's, it feels pretty similar to the real thing, which is crazy. Um, and then this last, um, this last set of brushes are the vector brushes, which this is actually where I hang out in a <laughs> lot. <laughs> um, because I, I mean, I usually do start sketching with a pixel brush. Um, which I guess I'm kind of skipping over that point um, for today. And I'm kind of just jumping right into the vector brushes, sure. but usually I will like sketch with that. Um, but uh, the vector brushes basically um, are really great for, especially if you're, if you're designing something that's either going to be um, really large, like a billboard or something, or um, you're designing something that's going to be on a whole variety of merchandise and apparel. So, yeah. Um, it, you can scale without losing resolution because it's actually not pixel based. It's all, um, yeah. vector based. <laughs> yeah. So, so it, it's the difference between vector and raster, like the, everything, all the other brushes you do are going to be dots per inch. They're like, they're, you're using them. They almost work great in Photoshop, obviously, right. but for scalability and everything, you, you might not have all that clarity when bringing it up. So I love this idea of like, this was the game changer, I think, on Fresco because seeing the vector, br the vector brush, it kind of is the greatest companion for doing anything like you do and bringing it into Illustrator without losing any of its quality. Right. Yeah. So that's honestly, this is this is the brush that I use the most um, by far, and I I love it. <laughs> yeah, I noticed too, like yesterday with the uh, the badge work you were doing, having to stay so. Uh, on track with that you're, you're you could see when you're doing the natural elements like the leaves and everything that your flow is much more um like Quick. it's much more comfortable i think <laughs> yeah yeah totally because it's like i mean that's what i even like about drawing anything in nature is um yeah. all the lines are pretty organic and mm -hmm. like quirky and you can just yeah run with it a little bit more um a, a lot of folks are chatting about the brushes and how many does one actively use in any given time period? Um, you know, even I, I know it's like, it's probably like me with fonts. I have like 8 billion fonts, but I still use four, right? <laughs> right? Like, do you find yourself the same with the brushes on Procreate? I mean, on uh, Fresco? Um, yeah, I definitely, I mean, I, I definitely like just the very standard um, vector brush that I'm using right now. I mean, it's literally basic round, <laughs> you know, like yeah. you, can't, you can't get any more standard than that. Sometimes I'll use a chisel um, or a flat, but honestly, I, I'm, 
it's so much more similar to drawing with like a marker or something where it's like if I want a thickness in a yes. line like I can just kind of hand do it myself um so that's kind of more of what I'm comfortable with and then also I I mean I'm very basic in a lot of this I I like the pencil tool for um yeah the uh oops the uh just sketching oh I don't know why that's doing dots but um yeah so those are kind of my two like everyday ones yeah um as i kind of mentioned before i i did do a children's book that um it was about uh life on a farm so there is like a lot of texture and even like drawing hay and stuff and so i used a ton of different pixel brushes for that which was really fun but um that is more for special projects for me at least it kind of goes with the project for sure i know for me too, like being that I'm not the most proficient in fresco just yet. I think some of the brushes were the the angle or the curvature or the calligraphy kind of assets of it where it gets thick and thin as you turn. Yeah, feel a little like I'm it, it gets way out of control for me because I haven't mastered that just yet. So I go to like what you have, where it's just simple round. And again, it's probably what all I need. And I can right. actually go in there and do the little fine tuning that I really want to do. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, there's, I think I've seen some people that are amazing with their handling of like you were saying, like the different like pressurized ones. Yes, and yes. I just, I don't know, this is what I'm, I'm used to, I guess, that's being a little lazy, I probably should try to, <laughs> <laughs> to learn a new trick. But um, yeah, it is cool watching people do that really well, mm -hmm. though. And even one brush has tons of settings. So you it's not yeah. like it's, it's one and done, you know, you can go in there and actually finesse some of those unique settings and everything that are really cool. Totally. Yeah. But for what you're doing, I love the vibe of it. Like, and again, too, you're keeping a series alive through this client, right? You, it's almost like you, even though you get this like open canvas for each variety, the whole point is to stay kind of on brand uh, throughout the execution, right? Right. Yeah. There, there definitely is a branding that has come alive through it. Um, mm -hmm. It's always funny because, you know, when, when I first started um, doing these designs for them, which was actually back in at January was um, my first one. So I've, I've done about 10 for them now. Um, and it really was kind of like finding, okay, what is, what is working? What's not, um, sure. you know, with uh, how people are responding and whatnot, but um, I do feel like it, even like the illustrations, there is kind of a, a vibe, I guess that comes forth. Um, even though they're all pretty different still, um, it's definitely, a, it's definitely a very playful brand, mm -hmm. which is, which is nice. Yeah. I, I like to, when it looks like it does come from the same artist, right. even in series where that, it, that still gives you enough kind of flexibility to do something different um you know and still stay on brand you know absolutely where yeah. a new a new person coming in is probably going to have a complete 180 and then it's like do we are we staying on brand with this particular uh look and feel you know yeah totally it is funny how like even just artists like what if they're jumping across different mediums or you know designing for packaging or um apparel or you know whatever it is mm -hmm. um they still have that their touch that you know you you really can't uh mimic or get rid of so it, exactly it's it kind of cool how that shines through so I, I i found some really cool stuff about your about about me page oh. on your website <laughs> love to ask you a few questions because i think uh, people would love to know you were okay. saying you were saying too you have clients ranging from household names all the way to like local farmers and everything yes. right so like what kind of pros and cons do you find in um, having such extreme uh, clients that are on opposite ends of the spectrum? Yeah, well, I have I, I have a, a heart for small businesses um, since I also am a small business. Yes. So um, I always I root for the underdog. I, I love when someone is, um, you know, wanting to uh, pursue a dream and um, are, you know, a smaller business that's trying to get their feet up off the ground. Um, so I really do enjoy those clients um, and working with them. And I always try to take on at least, um, you know, a good handful each year. Um, but then obviously there's also the fun side of working with a, a larger household name because it's, you know, it's kind of my own dream of work. Like I uh, last year I worked with the Chicago Bears um, and PNC Bank and 
Um, growing up in Chicago, I'm a humongous Bears fan. You know, my dad would sure. sing me uh, different sports th- songs uh, to sleep at night, like as long as <laughs> you know. That he, I think that was the most proud he's ever been of me. Of I course, right? Stuff the Bears. That so one they, was that one was for him too. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yes, it was very very personal. Uh, so there's always super cool, like rewarding things like that, or, you know, working with Patagonia, they've been one of my favorite brands forever. Um, so, so it's kind of, there's, there's like sweet things about both. Um, so one is kind of, you know, helping someone else's dream come true. And then I guess the other, um, is oftentimes my own type of dream coming true, working with some of these, these bigger brands. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think that's a great balance too, because mm-hmm. like the small business is like, you're right. Most of us can consider ourselves part of that. And oh yeah, it's the same when you get really great service from someone that you use or you hire, it's the same kind of thing. And you want to be that, that really great resource for someone that has no idea of like what, what branding or what great design can do for their company. Right. I love when someone's eyes are open because they're like, I had no idea my company or my store or my event could look like that. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it is just so personal for a lot of those people. It's, I mean, it's like their baby, you know, um, it's a a dream project or dream business or whatnot. So really coming alongside those people is just, it's super fun and you get to know them really well too. I Mm -hmm. think there's like a different, um, just like relationship that occurs. They almost become family in a way too. Right. You know, um, I look at a lot of the clients that I have on the smaller side that it is like a family. And when you go to their place, you go to their event, it's, there's an appreciation because you're part of that, whatever it took to get there, you know? Yes, totally. Yeah. Um, one of, so it's funny. I actually have oddly enough worked with a couple of different farmers, which I didn't even think that would ever be like a, a client or an industry. But um, one of one of the farmers were um, who I did the coloring or not the, the children's book with, um, and so I visited their farm and they just gave me a wooden box full of produce. Exactly <laughs> like, right. Yeah. Just like as like a hey, like nice to meet you. Like here, here's some squash, and I was like, wait, this is the coolest thing. <laughs> Great perks, right? Like especially right? for like an organic farm or something cool like that. Oh, yeah, that's that. that's exactly what it is. It's like a mm-hmm. small organic farm up in Wisconsin. And I was like, wait, this is amazing. Yeah, um, I, I love having some of those on the roster. It's pretty good. <laughs> yes, yeah. I'm like, this is the opposite of corporate. <laughs> mm-hmm. You're right. <laughs> Angela it. had a, a, qu- a quick question. How do you manage yeah. your rates working for the smaller clients? Ooh. Or even, you know, with having so many, you know, knowing you can probably get the big bucks for the bigger clients, are you kind of adjusting based on maybe the size of the company? Yeah. So what I do with that is um, I do have a smaller, a small business rate um, that is, uh, yeah, it, it is different than if I'm working with um, a larger corporation. And honestly, one of the main things I look at is um, I kind of think through because I I don't like to do royalties. I don't know if you do royalties or whatnot. I've tried it before, and I I would rather charge just flat rate yeah. fees. Um, I just it's easier. I, I it allows me to just stay focused on the creative stuff and not be like pounding people for True. checks. That, um, so with that being said, I kind of build in like what I you know am assuming. Um, the royalties would be. So if I'm working with a smaller company who, you know, is hoping to sell a hundred t-shirts versus working with another a large corporation who's selling 20,000 t-shirts or, you know, like the, in that aspect, it's like, well, it is, there is an obvious uh, pay gap, I guess. Mm-hmm. Or we, um, so that, that is kind of how I, I look at it is like, um, Basically, if the if a company is buying like the rights to um, this artwork, I kind of structure it differently um, based on how many products are probably going to be sold. Um, yeah. So I don't know if that. Um, yeah, it's like impre- like the impressions it's going to make, regardless. Is it made? Is it printed? Is it digital somewhere? It's almost like how many eyes are going to be on it. Like exactly. I, yeah. Right, and I, that might be a great way to 
um, validate or to tell a, you know, I like to tell the small client that, that like, that's how it adjusts. It's not like you're getting less quality from me. It's just oh, that. Yeah. And then it's a great way to talk to the, the client um, when they get your rates in a, in a bigger place. And, and let's right. face it too, a lot of times it comes from referrals. And I love it when a client goes like, oh, go to him, he charges this. And then it's a, the company that comes to you is like 15 times bigger than the referral. Right. So it's like, you gotta have, you gotta have some idea of how to kind of talk through some of those things, you know? Exactly. Yeah. And I think that that totally comes with practice. I mean, um, I think as you grow in, um, your business and especially if you're a freelancer, um, you know, you just, I, th I think money is a hard thing, um, especially in the beginning, because it, it does feel a little bit like nerve wracking. But once you do kind of get your rates down, then it, it just becomes um, a lot easier. And um, yeah, you just kind of have more of a system together, yeah. I guess. But Perfect. Yeah. How was the journey for you going when you decided to become full time freelance? Oh, um, well, I definitely, I freelanced on the side for probably, um, I can't remember now if it was like, like seriously freelancing on the side for at least like two years. Yes. Um, but I mean, definitely in the, I, for years prior to that, I would do jobs here and there. Um, and that was like throughout college, I would do jobs here and there. And then, mm -hmm. um, I did it on the side. So I, I had a graphic design job, um, out of college and I worked actually in the um uh in the in the college industry so I, I've made like um all the different like bookstore merchandise for um hundreds of universities around the country a lot of it was pretty straightforward but they would have me like uh design new templates for, yeah. for different like uh apparel merchandise um so uh so I did kind of, it, that was fun, like working very like in the apparel industry right from the get go um, and kind of understanding that and okay, like this is going, you know, uh, this is going to be sold by the thousands, like what's something that's going to resonate with a lot of people and um, get sold and people will want to wear this or buy this um, and like college age kids. Um, so it's, it was cool to have that job um, right off the bat, but then I would go home uh, you know, I've worked a nine to five, then I would go home, eat dinner and then work uh, as like a freelancer for, you know, the next like four or five hours a night. Yeah. And so I always, I always, uh, kind of, I really encourage that, um, that it's not something that you just kind of like say, Oh, I'm gonna, uh, be a freelancer now and, you know, quit my job and like, let's see if work comes to me. It's like, you really have to almost like sacrifice a lot of time up front. Um, and really even just like use that time while you do still have a stable job to experiment with what's working, what's not working. Um, what do you even like doing versus what do you not like doing? I mean, sometimes there's like things that I could do pretty decently, but I hated doing it. And so it's like, okay, cross that off the list. I don't, yeah, want to be don't put that. any of that on the portfolio. <laughs> right. And it's, or, and even like pricing, that's where you, you kind of work out some kinks with that and, you know, coming up with the contracts, coming up with, um, how do I, you know, figure out accounting? Like there's, there's a lot of really like unpretty things that you have to figure out, um, which I, I don't think a lot of people realize at first. So just, um, giving yourself that time to really work through a lot of that. Um, I would just recommend, yeah, having, having another job, but also, equally putting in a lot of work still. Um, and then after that, um, I was able to make the jump um, full time. And that was, I think about six years ago now, which is crazy. Um, and yeah, and even even that has been cool. Like I definitely used to network a ton. Um, I would fly out to even different industry trade shows that I wanted mm -hmm. to be in. I used to be in um, really involved in the outdoor industry. Um, it's where I, I met a lot of clients face to face. Um, and yeah, and now luckily, um, I think my, from like referrals and just work portfolio, uh, being on the internet, like all over the place. Um, and, uh, I, I haven't really had to network anymore. Um, but again, that was after 
probably four years of heavy oh, yeah. networking. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's definitely, it's definitely a process, but it's, um, it's a lot of fun. And I definitely encourage people to do that if, uh, if that is something that they want to. Yeah. I like that you said too, you went to the conventions and organizations of industries that you yes. want to work in, not necessarily creative ones all the time. Right. It's, oh no. it's, it's yeah. such a small, cause you, you, what happens is you're the only creative there probably exactly. e everybody <laughs> else is trying to sell or, you know, get their, their stuff into it. But if you have a conversation with a brand that might be struggling or needs your help or whatever, there's nobody else in your wheelhouse there, you know? Exactly. Yeah. And that was, that was exactly right. I mean, it, it did take a lot of like, uh, just awful. Like I had to muster up the courage to be like, hi, I'm Lisa. And you yes. know, hand a business card and explain who I am like that. That was hard. You know, I yeah. don't love doing that. But <laughs> I, I, I did feel like, you know, the unicorn in the room, because um, you're right, everyone is a salesperson or, um, mm -hmm. you know, whatever else. And um, but yeah, I mean, it was great. It was a, a really good learning experience. And um, definitely got me out of my comfort zone. Um, and was also a lot of fun at times. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's so much easier because you know, they're not, it's not like a creative one where they're being, they could be bombarded with other creatives trying to ask for the same thing. Right. And sometimes it's just more of a natural conversation. I, I got to, I was going to a natural foods, uh, expo that happens once a year. Oh, and cool. every time I went, I realized, you know, just by the name badge and it's saying something design or something creative on it, I would be stopped. I would just go into a place, try a sample of something and the that you, you don't even know you're talking to the owner of the company in most cases. Yeah. And they're like, Oh, you do designs? Like, oh, we've been struggling with this for so long. And, and I, I, I think we got two to three clients out of going to this one event, you know, and that's awesome. I don't think you can really put a price on that. It's pretty incredible that it's like that makes sense. You know, yes, go to community ones for creatives and 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 network amongst your industry. But if you want to get into a particular industry, go right. to those shows. You know, right? Yeah, that's so cool that you did that. Um, oh, it, it just was a weird coincidence because I brought my students there uh, because it's like a packaging like uh it, oh gosh it's just <laughs> non-stop it's all consumer good products and everything yeah and so we went really to just you know just sink our our teeth into like what's hot in packaging and trends mm, and things like that mm -hmm. and little did i know it would work out to be something even better so it's pretty pretty neat to kind of stretch your boundaries a little bit as a creative you know yeah absolutely and i feel like i mean there's definitely a place in time for the um uh, you know, going to different creative conferences. And I feel like that's like a, a cool time to really even just like make oh, sure. new friends and mentors and whatnot in the industry. But yeah, as far as like, actually, I think getting work, I would say to jump into, jump into an industry that you're interested in and then, um, yeah, kind of network for work in that, mm -hmm. um, so that it's not somewhere that's overly saturated, but, um, Yeah. It's like your target market all under one roof. Go. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's great. Megan said she used some of the fresco techniques that you saw, you showed off yesterday and oh. her experience in using the app is much, much better. Look Yay. at that. Oh my gosh. That makes me so happy. Love That's it. awesome. What, uh, what techniques did you use Megan? I'm curious. Yeah. To... Let us know. What did you, what did yeah. you work on? That'd be great. And, and maybe throw it in your Behance for sure. Come on. I love that. You gotta see it. That's great. I know I had my I had my uh, iPad with me most of the after dinner and I was like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to fire it up. I'm going to do some drawing. I was so inspired. It was just one of those. I think it was one of those days where it was just enough screens like we talked about yesterday. Mm. Like, oh, I got to got to give a little bit of a break. You know? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's I had the same thing yesterday. I uh, this is kind of a funny story, but we just bought a new house and we're on about an acre of land. And so I was like, I think I'm going to learn how to cut the grass today. Uh. <laughs> so I, I was like, I had my husband show me how to fire up the tractor. And I literally, I was like, I just need to be off the screen. So I, um, that's funny that you did that, like did something similar to where exactly. you're like, no more screens. It's like, but I'll do So at some point when, when you know, you'll do something that's like cleaning or organizing. <laughs> instead of being on a screen you know you've been on there far too long <laughs> yeah literally got excited about cutting the grass <laughs> mm -hmm. like let me see this thing how does yeah. it work 
Right. I'm like, usually you do that, but I, I might commit to doing it all the time now. This is great. <laughs> right. Yeah. I know. I did tell him, I was like, don't get too used to this. There you go. hundred <laughs> percent. Yep. It, it was fun for. So I love it. We're, we've, we're doing pretty great here, guys. We are at day two, in case you're joining us uh, a little late. We started at 12 o'clock Pacific time. We're here with Lisa McCormick, and she is designing uh, the second round of some cans for uh, a fun cider company, right? Yes. Hey, everyone. Welcome in. Um, yeah, I am working on um, a can uh, flavor today. Is um, It's called Feel the Beat. I'll zoom out a little bit. So it'll be uh, a, a hard cider that's, um, uh, the, oh my gosh, I, I'm losing my words. The ingredients <laughs> are pomegranates and beets. And so it'll be coming out in January. Um, so I was kind of having a fun idea of mixing that, um, you know, new year's resolution in January where everyone's hitting the gym again. And, um, I thought it'd be really fun to draw the fruits, um, and veggies and actually put them in these like eighties, nostalgic workout uh leotards and yeah just kind of make it really quirky and fun and bright um to to kind of inspire people to um i don't know yeah get get energized uh, in january <laughs> Do something for yeah exactly if anything have something that's you know at least beats <laughs> like, like right. that's that's right. starting the year off right you're having some healthy stuff <laughs> absolutely absolutely and so her, her her process flow is kind of doing some initial sketches bringing them into fresco like we're seeing here and then taking them into illustrator photoshop and just showing you how the whole arc of the process goes from one app to the other yeah so everything um that's what actually i love about fresco it's crazy i was thinking about this yesterday i think i've only been using fresco for a little over a year because i mean that's how old it is I, it's, <laughs> yeah you're right but i'm like i can't even remember not using it you know like it's really I know. felt so important for my workflow um mm -hmm. because it does just like you can uh send it straight to illustrator and um and it's all vectorized, which yeah. is super important for me. I found it to be that missing link. Like you had the iPad, you right. have your desktop or whatever you're using and to everything else I was using had 90 steps in between. I think right. someone even mentioned that yesterday. Like I'm, I've been doing it all wrong. And it's like, you know, leave it to this to figure out how to make it just streamlined and work perfectly. Um, never losing any of the quality of your line work coming in as vector. It's, it's so, it's such a great tool. It's honestly amazing. I remember even like back in the day when I first um, started getting into learning, you know, the different Adobe products um, in college and in my graphic design courses. Um, and I tried using like the Wacom tablets and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And um, I just I hated it. There was like a disconnect because you're not, you're, you know, you're drawing down here and you're looking mm -hmm. up. And so I would just I would just draw everything by hand and then scan it into the computer and then yeah. you know, go into Photoshop, make it like black and white and then image trace and illustrator and then clean uh -huh. up. The, it would take so long. Like I, oh my gosh, I can't even like, it, God it was, forbid it was you awful. made a mistake on something or the, or in the ink. And then yeah. there, like we said yesterday, there is no undo. Right. <laughs> there's, yeah. There's none. <laughs> no command Z when you're on a sketch pad. None. <laughs> so it's just like to have that, like, and that wasn't even like super long ago. I mean, I, I guess maybe like 10 years ago, but, yeah. um, and just where we're at now is just, it's crazy. I've talked to so many designers that have made that switch over and you know what's interesting too is you you think about even just the memory the whole the file organization everything of everything that you draw as opposed to i've seen artists show me you know their big gotcha. three ring, three ring binders that yeah. anything they did use like that became like oh that was the swoosh i used and i image i shot it with my iphone i image traced it or whatever i did they'd keep the raw one you know and next thing right. you know they have bookshelves full of things through the years and now it's literally all in your cloud. It's literally on your iPad um, and it's all in these apps and it's in your libraries too. I think that's what I've been starting to do um, mm -hmm. since being here on streaming a lot, kind of trying to practice what I preach. And one of the first things we, we preached a lot last year was using your Adobe libraries. And 
that is the hub. That is the way, you know, you can take any work from any app and bring it to the other app and, and share and collaborate with folks as well. So for me, um, that became a big game changer as well. I've never used them before that, you know? Yeah. I use the Adobe libraries for, um, color palettes. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. So that's, but I, I do need to get better about like importing actually, um, like all the assets. Like yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, with your, with the Lost Boys logo, you know, or whatever, let's say you have a brand that you've created and you have yeah. four to five, maybe you have a whole logo system, right? You have a more vertical logo, you have a horizontal, uh, you might have them in different colors or reversed, one's always the white one. Um, having them in your library really organized means like, not only are they always there and, and if you make a change to one, it will change wherever that is linked in every other document that it's placed. Oh, that's awesome. So you got like some amazing yeah. leverage there, which is really, really good. Totally. Yeah. I, yeah. I do need to get that figured out for sure. We got a question from Sam. Lisa, do you have any specific career goals for the future or are you pretty comfortable with what you're currently doing? Ooh, um, that's a good question. I mm -hmm. feel like, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like I, I always do have career goals. Like I'm, I'm pretty, I'm like very competitive with myself mm -hmm. I'm not like competitive with anyone else. Like I'm very much. <laughs> and I love, I love like, uh, sharing trade secrets. Yeah. And all that. But when it comes to me I, and it's more of, in a way, it's almost like a, I grew up doing a lot of sports. So I feel like it's kind of like a, that like athlete yes. mindset of like, you know, I just want to see how, how far I can take it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I, I do feel like that's been kind of, um, my mindset is just like, uh, yeah, I just want to see how far I can take it. Um, I would say there are a couple different, I guess, goals that I'm, I'm really humbled and thankful that I, I actually have crossed off. Um, I mean, even working with Adobe has been one, yeah. it was a huge dream, um, working with Patagonia. Um, but yeah, so I, I guess I don't have like a specific client or brand, um, that I, right now I'm like, Oh, I really want to work with these people. But I, I do think just like, just continuing to, to build, um, build my career and, um, I guess, yeah, see how far I can take it. And, um, yeah, yeah it's exciting. Cause really it is sky is the limit. Uh, since I, um, I'm able to control like my, my work and my business. Um, so yeah, just kind of seeing how far I can take it really. Um, yeah. Cause you're right it, on that competition with yourself side, that's something that never dies, right? Like it's that you, you're always, you can hit the best goal or the best wish list or bucket list. And immediately you're like, what's the next one? Like, right. 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 <laughs> In your mind. Right. Like, yeah. Totally. Yeah. And like I, I'm, I, I, I stop and smell the roses for about a second and then I'm like, <laughs> okay, what's next? <laughs> Every I know, time. It's so bad. <laughs> it is so bad. But you're right. You having the control is a great thing. And, um, someone said something great about like, it's, uh, it, it's very hard to make, I can't remember how they put it, but they said something like in your first year or something like that as a freelancer, it's very hard to oh. make, and let's just say a hundred K, right? Let's just use oh, that yeah. as some yeah. example. But then they said, but in your, in, after that, it's very easy to make over 300 and, and, mm. and in a way, whatever this person's uh, range was, imagine what your range is. And it is what that saying is, it is unlimited. It, it there is no cap. And, right. and I, and what's funny too, is having 20 years of like working for someone experience before doing my, my own thing too. I still have that default that I, I'm not really working cause I am not working for a company or, um, the, the, the way that you're supposed to kind of, you know, uh, go to do this, go to school, get a job work right. your way, and all that. And, and I've shuddered and crashed that path. So mm. isn't it weird sometimes it like, even when you feel like you've had a successful year or something like that, it's still kind of, you still question, am I doing the right thing? Yeah. Yeah. It's that imposter syndrome mm -hmm. for sure. Um, I know it is crazy. It's funny actually. So I think one of the biggest supports in my life is definitely my husband. Uh, he, he owns his own, um, uh, video company. So uh, it's with him and his brother, but we all kind of do very similar things yes. like where, um, we definitely had a lot of like, people questioning, like, are you sure you're going to be able to like make money? And wait, you guys are both doing something like this. Like, and, um, and yeah, so I think it's, 
you know, we're each other's biggest cheerleaders, which I think is extremely important to have a support yes. system to keep going when you do feel like, what am I doing? Or, you know, thinking about like, okay, I should probably just get a real job, you know, like even just to have the security. Um, but yeah, so I, I think just talking with other creatives and, and really um, just brainstorming and creating plans. Like I, I yeah. do like coming up with strategies um, and learning that business side because it really does make a big difference, even though it's not necessarily the fun, creative stuff. Um, yeah. It does, it does kind of get your feet planted on some solid ground. So yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I, I, it's not for everybody too. Like I, and it's I, not, and, yeah. and, you know, and I, and I think true, like knowing so many young students that want to aspire to that before they've even planted in uh, one step into their first real job, job, mm. they're already thinking uh, one day I'm going to have my own thing. And, and it's, it's, it's a great aspiration, but I think too, like you got to know some of the real world, you got to go through yeah. the hurdles of another company. Uh, hopefully, you know, what's great about that is you're learning on somebody else's dollar right. and, and it's not, you, you, you're just an employee. I don't want to say just an employee, but you know what I mean? As far as financial responsibility of a company, oh, right. Yeah. right? So like do your job, do great, make networking, promote, get yourself into, mm -hmm. in, into maybe even more of the manager director level positions in the creative world mm -hmm. and understand the budgets, understand timing, understand client relations. Like, then you you might go, oh, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to do it on my own. I like being here with the comfort of another place. <laughs> right. Yeah. And that's, and that's totally fine. Like there's definitely like, and there's no shame in that, um, yeah. you know, like for people to kind of realize that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I do think there's anything I've learned in this process is that like business is a really big part of freelancing. And that was something yes. that I knew nothing about going into it. I was like, I'm the creative type. Like I, I've got that down, but learning the business side was a, a big curve, um, a learning curve for me. But, um, I kind of had to come up with like a, okay, I would, you know, I would rather do like learn things that I like, you know, are just not fun at all for me than, um, be working for someone else and not that working for someone else is a bad thing at all it's just my own personality is like yeah i i love this more than i than not you know like it was mm -hmm. it it outweighed um the cons the pros outweighed the cons so i do think you need some type of like driving force to get you through those like harder you know, months and years of just having to kind of grind it out for a yeah. little bit. Um, and and I, what I'm finding too is I'm, I feel like the world sped up so fast. Things are so, people want things so quickly. And, oh, yeah. and they, and, and again, it's like what hasn't met that speed is how, how long it takes to, to grow at a company, how long it gets to grow in your career. Um, that's what I'm saying too, like with this idea of freelance, you know, your fingers are on the, the gauges a little bit here. So mm -hmm. like, if you do need to ramp up, if you do need to speed up, if you do need to add another freelance contractor with you, you know, now you're double, you're doubling up, but you're not, you're, you don't have the overhead. Like there's, right. there's, there's these unique ways. I feel like you're, the sky's the limit for what you can do to, to finish a goal or finish a project or move that, move the needle a little bit, you know? Yeah, totally. And, and even just like in our internet, like world, like it's one thing that is cool that like, I really do believe it's easier than ever to start a business, um, mm -hmm. by far, um, because I can, I mean, 95% of my clients I've never met, <laughs> you yeah, know, and, and I probably yeah. never will. Um, and they, I work with people definitely all around the country, um, and also internationally, like, and yeah. that's just you know, I could not do that without the internet. And that's something that's super cool about like your, um, your scope of clients network is so much larger. Yeah. So I do think that there's like, it's a really exciting time to get into freelancing. Um, and even if yeah. it's the, even if it's dabbling in it, in addition, like you said, right. to whatever your job is. And I think we all have that freedom, maybe a little bit more now, if you are working from home, I know a lot of folks who now f have found uh, some efficiency in their day. And, and now that extra hour to do maybe freelance is a little attainable as a, as opposed to a, two years ago where they were like coming home late every night, couldn't juggle the extra thing of a freelance thing, 
you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. What do you think about the idea of like narrowing down your niche to being a, a specialist rather than like a generalist? So like mm. Mervin was asking with, is he'd love to get into doing only logo design and brand identity. Is that a good idea? Um, he, he does, he, he does not want to do everything. He only wants to just do logo design. I think that's great. Um, I, uh, you know, what's that saying? Riches are in the niches. Um, yeah. 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 I, I think that especially if, while you're starting out, I think it's really good to kind of really just show one. Well, I mean, you don't have to only show one thing in your portfolio, but if, if that is something that you already know, this is exactly what I want. And that's what you're showing. I think yeah. that's a really good cohesive portfolio. And that's what a lot of people are looking for. Um, like they, when clients reach out to me, it's not, it's usually because they've seen something that I've made that is exactly what they want already. So yeah. I think that's awesome. If you already know what you want, um, if you don't know what you want, then definitely take the time to explore and figure out um, what industry or what focus you want to do. But um, yeah, I would say go for it if if you know already. I think that's wonderful. Yeah. I, I love the idea too. It's like you, I think what you said was smart. If you know what it is, it's right. kind of worth, it's kind of worth that shot, you know? And to like, to your question there, uh, he said he had, 10 years of experience doing it. He loves doing brand strategy. And what's great is I think that's like the way to at least try. Um, my, my fear with it was always that if I got too specialized, what, what, what would I be losing? Could, would I be losing out on potential opportunities, you know? Yeah. And I could, I'm sorry. Yep. Oh, so I was just gonna say like, and rather than specializing in just logo design, what I love to say is like, at least like I'm, I'll specialize in brand. And mm. that means so much more, even though it's still at its core comes from the logo and the, and the brand strategy that, that you must love doing. So like, to me, uh, when then let's say that brand is, we've done a great logo form and everything. I don't want them going to some trade show company to design their trade show booth. I'm like, yes. I, we can continue doing that. So again, you might present yourself as the specialist, but the, the scope is maybe a little broader, you know, what you do. That's really good. And even cause that is something that they, uh, that all naturally flows together really easily. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. So that, that's a good, a really good point. Um, Perfect. but yeah, I would say like kind of what I was even sharing earlier. Um, I, I kind of picked an industry to start in because that was part of my kind of strategy, if you will, um, was to, focus in on doing like one thing well, um, which was, I, I really looked into that, uh, the outdoor industry for that. Um, but now that it's been, um, it's been several years and my, in, I'm, I'm interested in other things besides the outdoor industry. So I was like, I, I think it'd be fun to kind of branch out. So I think, mm -hmm. um, even that is something like just to share, like if you do get kind of sick of, uh, that one thing that you've been honing in, you can kind of, you know, do that for a while and then start to explore, okay, what's next. And I feel like I'm very much in that phase of, um, like I said, I, I used to do a lot of outdoor stuff, um, outdoor industry stuff. Um, and now it is a lot more like, you know, like food brands or, you know, food and drink or, you know, entertainment sports, like, so you don't have to stay in something for the rest of your life. Yeah. Um, but it can be really good to focus on one thing for at least a while. Um, yeah. I always say if they're knocking on your door for that one thing and yeah. there's a line waiting and the demand is that that hot, you're good. Right. <laughs> the, yeah. be, be the be the specialist as yes. long as you can. <laughs> you're doing something great. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. If uh, if some of you are just joining us, uh, Great recap on what we're doing. We're being joined by Lisa McCormick, and she is an illustrator, Hello. graphic designer. Uh, we are Hello. in day two of doing a really cool brand and packaging project for Lost Boy Ciders, correct? Tell us a little bit more. Yeah, so um, yeah, Lost Boy Cider, they are a cider company out in um, Alexandria, Virginia, right outside of DC. Um, and I have been designing their um, limited edition ciders that come out um each month so it's kind of like a special flavor and they're they're a really fun quirky brand um 
So I, um, I really try to play into that uh, by, by designing these really quirky uh, illustrations for their packaging, as you can see. That's um, great. Yeah. So today I'm doing Feel the Beat is the flavor. Um, and um, it's going to be coming out in January. So again, the, the notion with this was kind of to do um, like a New Year's resolution, trying to eat a little bit healthier again, work out maybe. Um, and so I thought it would be kind of funny to draw the pomegranates and beets, um, which are the ingredients of, of the cider. Nice. Um, and have them working out in some fun 80s leotards. So <laughs> we should have something like drink your vegetables or <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> as a fun little tagline. I oh, love to great. like talk about what you're doing right now. So you, you were, you drew out everything pretty quickly, but you, you were always kind of making sure certain joints and things were like connected, connecting well, but you are taking a, a really good look at everything and cleaning it up, right? Yeah. So I'm just, I'm kind of making sure the line work is a little bit more clean. Um, and again, I, I'm not being like overly perfectionistic about this right now because I do sure. want to keep it rolling. Um, but yeah, definitely like anywhere where, you know, you can see like right here, um, there's definitely some weird edges. Um, uh, I'm just kind of fixing them up and smoothing things out so that um, it, it looks all cohesive and clean. When you gotcha. Up. Now, are you using a white brush? Are you erasing? Tell them how you're you're cleaning this up. Yeah, so I am erasing it, um, and then yeah, I'm, I'm erasing it, and then if I have like anything that I need to add back, I'm going back in with the vector brush, um, and then after that, I'll actually just uh, fill in everything with color. So that's why I don't I don't use a white brush. I, I do want to make sure it's that's actually an eraser, um, Great. or else the paint bucket won't work. <laughs> there you go. Yep. And we're going to do a guest uh, artist spotlight in about 30 minutes from now. So make sure you guys are staying to that. And always remember too, if you're watching this on YouTube, to make sure on the live streams, come on over to behance.net slash live um, and get in on the conversation here. Great chat. Uh, this is the place to be. Let's just face it. <laughs> yes, come hang. <laughs> exactly. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to drop it into chat as well. Um, we're pretty, we're getting close to some new colors. Coloring, coloring yesterday was quite fun. Yes. Yeah, I should jump into that soon. I was just doing a couple yeah. more just quick cleanups, but um, yeah, kind of as what I was hinting at, I, I do want to make this feel pretty decently bright and happy um, just because it, at least again in Chicago, I don't know how it is in California. It's probably a little less <laughs> dreary yeah. in January than Chicago. We've had um, some heat waves in January. It's weird. Heat waves? <laughs> oh wow! So not negative nineteen degrees. No, no, not at all. <laughs> I know. I I used to religiously come out to um, Chicago for St. Patty's Day, and that oh, that's yeah. about the and that was that wasn't even bad weather but it was like that's about the coldest i can do <laughs> from california yeah. i mean it can get brutal in march so mm -hmm. but yeah i remember um a couple winters ago um my car literally just died like it, it was just it was outside and it just it completely died and quit on itself um i think it was a negative 20 degree day um oh wow and it was just like nope I, i'm not doing this anymore so gosh um, yeah, it's real. It for for real. years, I had a client in Milwaukee, and we mm. were there almost every month. So there'd be months where you're like, "Oh, great time to go," and then three months later, you're like, "It's negative 14. Like, oh my god, I'm not going to survive. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. It oh, and I still have like I bought. I had all different jackets and things and winter gear that never saw the light of the day here unless I was traveling uh, over there. <laughs> right. That's so funny. I mean, it is one of those things where it's like we habitually complain and say, why do we still live here? Like during those months. But then sure. it's like, honestly, I love summertime Chicago. Like it's. Oh, it's, yeah. It's beautiful. I love the city. Um, you know, it, it's home for me. So I'll I definitely like traveling a lot, but I don't foresee me moving anytime soon. Oh, sure. I think if you can put up with it for a few years or you're born and raised there, it's like, that's what you're used to. It What's the what difference, right? Yeah. You love the city you're born and raised in, you know? Right. That's great. Sarah said she's uh, actually a student majoring in marketing and a minor in graphic design graduating in May. What advice would you give? 
Ooh. Um, for like a career advice or what? Yes. Yeah, so I guess of... like what's interesting is like majoring in marketing and then minoring in design. Mm -hmm. um, that's interesting. I, I mean, I know a lot of folks that major in design and then minor in marketing as a nice thing. So I guess too, like it depends on well, maybe what's the, what's the happy place there? Like, do you maybe go for the marketing position at a right. marketing place, but coming in with some design and graphic skills will make you a, a I think a much greater asset to someone, Absolutely. you know? Yeah. And even, I, I feel like that would even be really cool. Like if, um, they're in marketing and then they maybe work alongside some designers. So like exactly. kind of what you're saying, like they have some of that, um, skill set, um, but then maybe pass off some of the more technical work over to, um, just like a tr traditional graphic designer or whatnot. Um, but it, it actually is super nice when, like, I love when my clients are familiar with at least just a basic understanding of even just how different like programs work or, you know, like, um, so I, I do think that's super, uh, super beneficial to be able to kind of speak both of those languages. Oh yeah. And I think also too, your coworkers from another, another division of the company will really appreciate that you have some knowledge of their world too, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I love that. We used to cross kind of educate the departments at the company I worked for, and we made sure, you know, sales and marketing knew what it took to produce something in the creative team. And then the creative team would go on sales, um, trips and things with the sales team to understand their side of the business too. That's and it, cool. it was really great because now it's not just them saying like, you don't understand. It's like, oh wait, we all do now. <laughs> so it was like, it really had a, a a really nice appreciation across the board with everybody. Yeah, that's so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's it's good to at least like try on different like hats, so to speak. Of, exactly. Of Ooh, we're bringing in the color palette, folks. I think I think I, I'm I'm liking this already. This feels yeah. great. Yeah, little little hot pink. For I'm seeing I'm seeing Thursday. like yeah, some old like um, oh gosh, like we were talking about the '80s and '90s like exercise <laughs> videos, and this looks great. That's awesome. That's what so, I was hoping you would say. So we need some, I need, you think you need like the brightest of yellows and the funnest of like the magentas and pinks. And this is great. Yes. Going all out. Oh, I'm, I'm realizing I forgot to put socks on him. Perfect. Um, yeah, this is, this is the fun part. I love coloring. Oh yeah. It's so therapeutic too. Just like seeing it all come. It to feels, life. this is the coloring book stage. Right. You know? Yeah. Actually, I'm going to really paint neat. up these lines a little bit more. Yeah, I think everybody kind of agrees that understanding both sides of the of any kind of business or things like that is really beneficial. Mm -hmm. um, having more internal workshops based on this would be great. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Kieran. We 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 do a lot of it on. Um, if you've checked out the Office Hour show that I do with uh, Andrew Hawk Rattle, we we've we've got about 60, 70 episodes, and a lot of it is the stuff we teach both in our design courses, and a lot of it is is those things as far as like how to get through leadership, how to, you know, how does a comp, how does an internal creative company work and, and just little insights on what to look for and how to kind of prep yourself for a lot of that stuff. So take a look through some of those. If, uh, if you guys are interested for sure. That's awesome. I'll definitely be checking that out. Um, yeah, that we really have, we're starting our, uh, back to school season tomorrow. And, um, what we're trying to do is we're taking all the courses you would take typically take in school and showing, the design and creativity side of them, which is kind of neat. So we're, oh, cool. we're breaking right into journalism and editorial tomorrow. And we're going to be showing how design affects both, you know, clarity, hierarchy, um, type treatments mm -hmm. and things like that. So it should be really fun. I can't wait to uh, get it started. That is so awesome. So are, yeah. are you guys both um, professors? Yeah, we both teach at different schools, which is kind of cool um, and very different um, uh, approaches to teaching design. I think Andrew's taught more of art history and mm. I've taught more of branding and design. So we, we bring in some, um, we have, we have some fights too, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> it's always because it's like, it, you can't always agree, you know, you gotta have right. a, a good Different conversation methods. and an honest one as well. It's pretty cool. 
Yeah. That's super cool. How long have you guys been doing that show? This has been, uh, we had our year anniversary about two months ago. So it's about a year and two months. Like we started right at March, 2020. Um, just considering that so many people were, in, 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 especially students, were home now and not in their classes, not with their mm. instructors. And the idea there was to like build a community that you can come to every Friday and you know share your work. We were doing portfolio re reviews all the time and it's really a blast. It's really fun. That's so cool. I love hearing how people like utilize this time well during COVID of like, obviously it was, and it's still, we're still in it. Um, yeah. But it's been such like a crazy, difficult time but like i love hearing some of those like silver lining stories of like oh yeah yeah just how how you make some you know lemonade out of lemons hey, right yeah like it's, it's yeah really a, a inspiring to hear i remember one of the first quotes i heard that first week or two was someone said like you're either a uh, team roll up your sleeves or you're not <laughs> like and right. and again like it was like you know if you were in the position to kind of you know just keep momentum going or help others out or do something mm -hmm. you are lucky enough to be um you know able to do that like it was a perfect time to, to to kind of spread your wings a little bit and see you know i know a lot of people like started podcasts started youtube channels um started tutorials or yeah. like selling you know brushes and things like that to other creatives so it was like really neat to see how that worked absolutely yeah that was i started streaming during that time i mm -hmm. had never done that before and then that was I did my first Adobe live I, I like reached out to the Adobe team and then did the um, fresco beta program and Great. streamed all last year and it was like I'd never streamed before it was kind of nerve-wracking and now it's like oh my gosh I love it it's so fun yeah. you know and it, yeah. it is cool to see like you know when you get a little bit out of your comfort zone just kind of what it's a great what thing can happen yeah yeah, yeah. Chris asked a question a little bit about how you started selling your own merch Oh, um, so actually, I don't really like selling my own merch. Um, <laughs> uh, I, um, I, I like working with other companies. I, I found that early on because um, I did try to sell different merchandise, um, you know, at, I don't know, different stores and whatnot. And I found out pretty quickly that I don't like selling things, but I yeah. do like making and creating. So um that's why i kind of strategically partner with brands um to make stuff for them um and then let them sell it so Good. yeah that is i think everyone's different on that too and i know some people yeah. that have just Love flourished it. at it and i'm so mm -hmm. i'm so like envious of folks who do that and they've how they've set up a little thing maybe in their garage or in a spare room they have keep the inventory uh they sell it all out themselves right. Um, and then I know people that have used like fulfillment places as well to do that. And uh, either one, it's, it's a lot of extra work on top of being the designer, you know? Right. It is. But yeah. If, if, you know, if that's something that people, you know, like to do, then that is awesome. Oh, sure. And, um, yeah, you can definitely be super successful and kind of, I guess, yeah, really have a lot of control over what you're making. Um, yes. but yeah, I, I personally don't love doing that, um, but yeah. I think that's that's probably my answer and it's the reason why I never tried. Because <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I know how much work is involved. I mean, it's just, it's so it's it's a lot of work it really is and 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 you it's like starting a youtube channel like or a podcast like it's very yeah. easy to do that first one but then it's like over continuing and, and doing it over and over again or, or when you promised uh to deliver uh it's a lot you know so make sure if you're doing something like that it's um it's it's something you really want to do you know right yeah yeah even just like fulfilling like all the like shipments. Like I yeah. remember I, I went through a phase where I did sell prints for a couple of years and um, yeah, it just, I just didn't enjoy any of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And then and, uh, Mervin just even brought up the idea of uh, t-shirt design through affiliates and where you just create the art and obviously mm -hmm. they take care of everything else. That's, that is the safest route to take. I think, I mean, why not dabble in it? Is if, if you have something to say and and some designs you really want to get out, get out there, uh, I would I would say that's the first way to first step in anything. Go don't go full throttle. Go with yeah. those. It's such a safe bet. I don't think there's any upfront really anything to lose to, to on those. 
because you design, pop it in there, tell them what kind of profit you want to make per shirt. And they basically do everything and give you the markup. Yeah. Yeah. That is a really awesome option as well. Do you know of any like good companies that do oh, that? Oh gosh, there's so many out there. I, I know like, um, T public is a great place to oh, start, yeah. mm -hmm. right? They've been doing this for quite a long time and then they keep adding to their library of, of things that you can kind of do mugs, frames, um, you know, society six is a great one as well, yes. where you, you, you do all that kind of work and stuff and, um, sell it. Uh, your art is just basically the skin to all the products that they <laughs> sell. So, um, I, I read some great success stories. Some people have, they, the cool thing about that is you, if something particularly like current events or big trends happen, you can mm. fire back and have it on your store the next day. Really fast, right? yeah. Because it's like, it doesn't have to be actually manufactured. You're just uploading new designs. So a lot of folks that do things that are very current or or um, fun with the times and trends uh, can, really, um, can really nail it because people are looking for stuff so immediately. Um, and then you got to market it. So again, you got to do all the marketing of it. You got to make sure, I'm sure you, you open up your own like Instagram page or something, um, and Facebook and just get the word out there as best as possible, you know, totally. from scratch. Yeah. Oh yeah. Teespring was the other one. Um, there, I think T fill in the blank and you'll probably find it online. <laughs> 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 all right. So we, we're, we're, we're looking at kind of how you've positioned the the mock-up area of the title and where the logo goes. So now you're just going to start messing around with where these guys are going to go and some music notes. Exactly. I'm just kind Great. of playing with the layout a little bit now, just kind of seeing like, um, yeah, where can I kind of squeeze these different uh, little characters um, in and around um, this, this uh, layout. And also another thing to even know, like when designing something that's 3D, I always kind of try to keep in mind like what is actually going to be seen right from yes. the front. So this whole wrap, I'm, you know, we're not going to actually be able to see all of this. So there'll be something a little bit more like, like this is what you see. Um, uh, like right from the front, if you're holding the actual bottle. So kind of making sure that um, even what's in that space is interesting enough to, yeah. to really grab people's attention and that there's not too much just like blank space or whatnot. Um, so yeah, this is just kind of a organic pattering, pa pad patterning, pattering. <laughs> I think you were trying <laughs> oh, to say words. scattering and pattern. <laughs> pattering. <laughs> scattering. It's like, I that's a, like that. It exists. It's a shortcut word. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't tell, don't challenge us. It's a word. <laughs> uh, Are you, when you're. I, this is one of the best things I love to ask designers. I find I think everybody has the same hurdle. I cannot place things randomly. It's scattered, randomed, you know, position turned, maneuvered. It always looks like a some pattern. And I'm like, I, how, any tips on randomizing oh. your placement? Because like you did that yeah. yesterday really well. I think with kind of the the way you repeated the patterns, and you're getting into that zone now. So like. Is it, is it always an angle turn? Is it always a, are you looking at how the other one is and are they too, uni too unique or, or too the same? Yeah, I mean, I guess some of me, like I do like kind of try to make it look a little bit like a pattern so that it's not totally scattered. Like yesterday it was more scattered because yeah. each one was different where this is actually, I am like using repeat designs. Um, yes. so they're not all different characters. So I guess this one will look a little bit more like a true pattern. Um, but yeah, I just, I'm very much the, like, a the type of person that really eyeballs things. Um, <laughs> so see, yeah. it's a natural thing because you, you have that gift. And I think that's, mm -hmm. I've seen people do it. I'm like, that looks so naturally randomly scattered. How oh, I can't funny. do that. It always looks like the groupings and I'm like, Ugh. Oh yeah. Well, I'm have to find a test. class on that. <laughs> right. Yeah. When, when you hang, um, something on the wall, like a picture frame, do you measure it or do you just go for it and throw a nail on the wall? <laughs> the evidence is right behind you. That's it's a, test. it's a mess. <laughs> oh, I think it looks good. <laughs> oh, thanks. I think I've, I've managed to fill in and, and fix it by placing odd things in the gaps, but yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I have no patience. I go right to it and just like, this looks great. 100%. Let's do it. I'm that Let's way too. Back. Yeah. Yeah. It's that also like I remember a, um, a teacher back 
oh God, it was even like a junior high teacher that was saying something in an art class that was like, there's always enough time to do it over and over again, but there's never enough time to do it right the first time. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. So and true. I, I, and here, here I am. And I'm like, that made, that made so much sense. Like it, nothing else I, I will remember from a junior high, but that right. one line, I'm like, cause it was like, it was made for me. I was like, that hit you to the good, core. <laughs> good one. Good one, dude. <laughs> that is hilarious. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So I guess, yeah, he, someone said it right. Blocked in the s symmetry mindset. Like, yeah, I can't break out of that symmetry thing. Mm. Um, but I see what you're doing too. There's almost like a pattern happening, which is really cool. And yeah. you can even, you can even do like a uh, pattern maker in uh, illustrator. You can. Yeah. You know? Which is probably something I, I, sometimes I do use that. Um, but yeah, today, I guess I'm, I'm doing it a little bit more random and yeah, I've cheated sometimes too, where I'll do the, 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 pa the pattern maker and then I expand it. So now it's no longer the pattern, but now I can go, I, I have some bit of a, of a oh. nice kind of um, foundation and I can mess with it a little bit more. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. smart. So that it's not like completely. Um, yeah, it's giving you a little, it's almost giving you a head start and then you get to mess around with it and like change it up to something, you know? That's a really good idea. I like that. I, I love too that between. I'd say Illustrator still is my powerhouse, but like, mm -hmm. I still feel like I only know about 10% of that program. Like it right? never, it never, never ends. I mean, uh, the great things that, you know, you can quickly look up something on YouTube or on a creative cloud video and you're like, I didn't even know, didn't even know. Now it, it becomes your, your best friend, you know? And I feel like they're always adding new features to like, oh. All the, time. all the time and did i hear you're uh you're doing something with adobe max which i know that's where all the new features come out yeah we're we're actually recording it right after this which is kind oh, of no cool. way. i can't say anything about it okay though. oh sorry <laughs> hopefully i didn't say too much <laughs> it in includes a, a someone you see on this channel uh an awful lot and so we're, <laughs> yeah we're, we're what's neat i'm not privy to anything too secretive yet but um I love this time of the year because it's so neat to know what's starting to come out. Um, I, it's just exciting because like, you know exactly when you see something like particularly at sneaks or something, mm -hmm. how, like how that's going to affect your, your flow, how you're going to get better, you know, how you're going to be able to do something quicker and still charge the same amount, like it's bottom line. Right. I, I, I love that kind of stuff. It's Absolutely. great. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, I love Adobe max. I've been so excited for, um, this year's to come out, but hopefully I didn't say too much. I feel bad. Now. Oh, no, not <laughs> at all. Not at all. That's great. It's, okay. it's, I love the, the, uh, the anticipation of it too, which is really cool. Totally. And then our podcast gets to do, we're interviewing a few of the big speakers as well, which is kind of fun. And that will live on the Mac site. These really cool interviews with some of the folks that are speaking. That's um, awesome. so yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff. And then our, our office hours team is looking at ways to kind of participate as well. So really excited. That's awesome. I love it. Kind of the beauty of it being virtual. Like you, you can really tap into so many different things. Um, can't wait for the real deal though. Can't wait for it to come back. It'll be great. Yeah, that's so true. Okay. Nice. Well, so well, this is I looking think, great. Yeah. I think we're, we're ready to jump into, um, Adobe illustrator. So yeah. we'll get on the desktop here. Um, I'll actually, I'll, I'll show you everyone again, how, um, to send this over to illustrator. So it's super easy. It's this button, right? Yeah. Take uh, notes guys. Take notes. This is very complicated. <laughs> yeah. Very complicated. Uh, get out your longest uh, sketchbook <laughs> pad. Um, so it's this button here. It's the third on the right. And it just literally said, send to illustrator. And I click that and I wait for, you know, 30 seconds and, um, it'll be all up on my, uh, Adobe Illustrator desktop. So um, that's literally it. Um, that is so great. I love <laughs> it. And I noticed too, like we were talking yesterday, you could do the live streaming right from your iPad. Um, if any of you guys are like totally used to, or it, like thinking of that, Adobe's really encouraged you guys to try that. You can do live streaming on Behance and see all of these other artists that are showing off how to do it. The neat thing about uh, Fresco is it's the first one to actually be able to do it right from your iPad and it will use the front camera if you want and you can have your picture in the bottom corner and show your entire process and your artboard there. Pretty cool. Yes, it's amazing. All right, so we are, we've got, it looks like it might've been sent to Illustrator. We're looking good. 
Yes, we are. Just move this over. And oops. Wonderful. Look at that, guys. From iPad to desktop. So cool. All right. So first, I'll, I'll uh, group this together and do a kind of cut out again. So I can just kind of plop this over um, into my uh, labels. Command 7, cut it all nice. And we'll get back into our template that we used yesterday um, and just kind of do, do the same thing. Plug this on in, paste that over there. There we go. Nice. Cool. The wonders of fun templates that you can use <laughs> over and over again. And then it's a save as. <laughs> yes, totally. And actually, I think I set the color. Yeah, I think that is the color that I wanted to use. Um, or let me go into my library. Library colors. So the cool thing here is most of the templates set up in a way to just have color treatment changes based on what you used in the actual illustration, right? Yeah, totally. So it's um, this is this is pretty much a quick um, way to just kind of update the colors um, and play around a little bit. Um, but I I do kind of have a system where I usually pick about three colors to. Um, kind of go off of for actually making my um like the the rest of the like design part of yeah. the label um so i don't if I, you know like obviously i'm using a lot more colors in the actual illustration but i i try to really narrow it down for the um the uh rest of the part the yeah. more, like, design part um so yeah that's kind of kind, kind of, of fun too to that. see like what works What's, how do you get the best contrast with the least amount of colors? Yeah. You know? yeah this is going to look so fun on the end. <laughs> you think, are you already thinking of the background color too? Or, or what's, what, what's your thought process there? So for this, I actually was kind of thinking of leaving it white, I think. Mm -hmm. um, because again, I'm, I am still thinking about like, okay, January, and I'm thinking of like snow on the ground and whatnot. So it does kind of have that like, um, color matching and even with um, like the blues like I just it's kind of like the colors that at least I think of when I think of that winter time yes. um, so that's definitely something that I like to kind of emulate um, when I'm when I am like going over uh, choosing colors um, I, I think about like what season the can is going to be released in so gotcha yeah and you're right the white might be a really nice touch too which yeah. will be great and give it that that kind of wind. We talked about it yesterday. It's like you could say winter without really adding winter elements in there because then right. like I, how many times do you see heavily branded Christmas stuff on clearance oh, right the day man. after Christmas? Right. So no, no, um, no <laughs> brand wants to be stuck with stuff. So help yeah. them out as a designer, right? Yeah, we want to move forward in January away from all of, yeah, the Christmas stuff yeah. and uh, do something a little bit more fresh, hopefully. There you go. Yeah. Looking great. What's uh, when when the Lost Boys brand was being created, what was their what was their influence and um, kind of, you know, play off of the Lost Boys and the Peter Pan idea? Yeah. So um, I don't think I really shared uh, on this episode. I talked about it a little bit last uh, time, but Lost Boys actually, um, it's my cousin's company. So it's a very, uh, very personal company for me, uh, uh, Tristan and Katie. Um, and Tristan was really the, um, he, he had the, the dream of it. So he was a banker for, you know, 20 years or so and um, had just had this, dream of um starting a cider company and so um and it and it really was about kind of like finding your own path a little bit and um just doing something you love um because i mean he i think he was you know really good at being a banker and it was something that he was successful at but um his dream was to do something uh that's you know a little little bit different um and start his own cider company and whatnot and so it really was just that like Kind of like almost childlike um like dreams of like what you know what do i really want to be when, I'm, yeah. when i grow up sort of a thing so 
uh, I think he had a lot of fun with um, just the marketing of it all. And um, it, it is such a fun place. Uh, you can definitely feel that like freedom and uh, just, yeah, almost like that childlike happiness uh, when you're there. So that's great. It's kind of a what a spin. I mean, this world of uh, spirits and canned beverages and everything is like we said yesterday is opened up almost every theme now has been used. And it's so neat to see that it's it's that widespread and it's playful yes. now. You can actually have Absolutely. some fun with these brands like beyond. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's great. Super fun. So we've got about four and a half, five minutes before we're going to get into the artist spotlight. Perfect. So maybe, uh, yeah, there. Ooh. Kind of trying some of this pink and That instead. looks nice. <laughs> kind of dig that. Totally. Oops. Have you ever used um, select same color fill? Oh, um. Like sometimes it's really helpful when you got a lot of floating elements that you're trying to change to the same color, you know? Yeah, totally. I, um, I, well, I do the magic wand tool, but sure. with that, yeah. uh, select, I think too many of the things Because some of this, I do want to keep. Oh, that's right. So you, you, cause you've got stuff on the kind of, other parts that do need to stay the same. Yeah. Yeah. But, it's kind of like a little specific. Yeah. I always find too. Um, yeah. I, and someone just asked, need to change all the text colors on the blue background at once. Any shortcut it get, again, like we were saying, if it's everything you could do the select, select same fill and then just one click will change everything in one color to another color with the eyedropper if you need to um but since she has stuff that's not all it's like that blue does is not she doesn't want to change it everywhere um yeah. what you can do i think would be one way is, is either have it on lay on the layer itself or group them at a certain point uh so when you click on that it's grabbing all the ones that are uniform that need to be changed Mm, okay. Because I know it's like it's sometimes a, it's funny. I've been doing that a lot lately. It's trying to find those little shortcuts, finding ways to streamline the time because like those repetitive things just become like, oh my gosh, like this is like I got to do this with like eight SKUs. Right. You know, yeah, right. Give me a break. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah. Yeah. Any shortcuts that you can use are always a really good idea to jump on mm -hmm. because it, it really does just like cut down your time so much more. Yes. Yeah. Have you found that, have you had any um, name of the, of the actual SKU that was either too big or didn't fit right in the space you've provided? I, yeah, there have been some times where I'm like, oh, it's a little finicky. And I ended up just kind of making that, um, I forget which one it was, but it was a, it was a really long one. And I, I made yeah. that like executive design choice that, you know, for that one, I'm going to just make the um, title <laughs> font a little bit smaller and, yeah. you know, change it back the next time. And it, luckily it wasn't anything too drastic. So I don't think anyone oh, noticed, good. Um, but yeah. I always love that too. It's like, I thinking about, the next project you do is to like maybe leave a bit more space in that area for the future, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Cause sometimes I'll try to fit it all in one line. Um, yeah. It works, but um, I feel like that's a cutting yeah. it a little close. So yeah. I, I will keep it. So how are you feeling? Is this, this kind of a, a few people were saying they like the pink combo better, but Ooh. this is now the kind of like that ice blue or the, uh, the more blueberry blue, I'd call it. Yeah. 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 And it's kind of, I don't know. I was thinking it does kind of feel like winter, you know, like it's kind of like cold blue mm -hmm. icicle feel like it's, yep. um, but also with some, some energy, uh, with all the bright colors around it. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah. I was thinking of exporting this, um, so yeah, replace that and we'll, I'll pull this up in Photoshop. And then I know, um, we are probably jumping into the artist spotlight in a minute here. Yeah, we're so looking almost there. That will be perfect. So great, great place to pause after you get a, so you're doing an export to, um, I just did to my desktop, yeah, um, as right. a PNG. And then I, um, I have this up here again, uh, this, this Photoshop, um, uh, file that I basically just plug in the um label design that i just did in illustrator and i make a, a cool mock-up that right. um really helps people see you know awesome. final result yeah 
All right, well, let's take a quick look. It's time for our artist spotlight. We're gonna go and check out their Behance page. Um, today we have Amber Assay, I'm gonna say. <laughs> uh, hope I'm not butchering that last name. She is a graphic designer, nicepeople.com. What a, ooh, what a great URL to have. That is awesome. That's really great. Um, so she is uh, based in Los Angeles and um, looking really cool. There's a great vibe and a view here. Are you able to catch it yet, Lisa? Okay, sorry. Yes, now I am on Perfect. here. Perfect. You got it. Awesome. There we go. So we're going to br browse through. What's your first impression? I love, I love kind of that, those first impression things when you look at someone's you know, um, presence online. Yeah, it feels super clean. Like I mm -hmm. love, it's kind of like a very like buttoned up, sophisticated look. I love the gold leafing um, in that, it looks like westbound. Yeah, let's take um, a look at that one maybe and branding. see. So. Yeah, it's beautiful. This is great. Oh, so you can see beautifully done. I love when you see a really nice case study put together with a good intro, um, some credits, always good to, you know, yeah. if you worked with a copywriter and things like that. Oh, I love that, love that icon. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's really beautiful. Like that. This looks great. Oh, wow. What a great, nice logo system as well. This is Love nice. That. One of yes. my favorite things, right? Like d never just do a logo, do all the other <laughs> things for them and show them what you can do. And then look how wonderful all this looks together. Wow. Yeah. I love even all the different varieties of typesetting that they did. And uh, I know. If you, up, if you go up to that page, that was just, uh, yeah, that one. Yeah. It's like, there's so much fun variation to the type setting and um, it really gives it like a, a personality, but it still feels like sophisticated, but yes. it is a little playful, which is hard to do. I feel like it's usually one or the other. I know, right? You're right. Yeah. And it has, they all feel like they came from the same system, the same vibe. Yeah. Um, really nice to see the whole setup here. This looks fantastic. Really well. And you know, you, when you're doing things like this too, it's kind of like, you might feel like you're repeating your stuff over and over again, but again, that's just sticking to the brand. That's sticking to, you know, the essence of what you've created and making sure it's working throughout, you know? Absolutely. Nice too. This looks great. I love, love that like sun drenched kind of like extra exposed mm -hmm. uh, vibe here with the shades of the palm really nicely done. Yeah. It definitely feels like super fresh and clean mm -hmm. and healthy, and which I think that is what they're probably yeah. going for. So let's see. Nailed Anything it. Anything else you want to check? Oh, let's see this one. Daily, uh, design variety. Really nicely done. Oh, wow. Oh, so I think it looks like sh she has done like a little newsletter and like a little promotional piece uh, yeah. with her business card on there. This is like, oh my gosh, this is a, this is a huge goal. I love this. Yeah, that's gorgeous. And I'm always amazed at how people can create like I mean, it, it feels like almost like an illustration piece, like a full out just, oh, here you go. but yeah, just using type. Oh yeah. Oh, and that too. gosh, oh. this is just wonderful. That's so gorgeous. like every time someone asks, what can I do for a promo piece? Make yourself <laughs> a little newsprint. You know, this is, this is incredible. Yeah. So neat to see. And it, it, it might give you more of a chance to, to do the, the passion project or the thing that you don't get to do with your, you, with your clients so much, mm. you know, maybe, you know, putting together a, a great quote page or something like that. But this is just, um, oh, this is just beautiful. Look at this. And I, I really feel like it, it really shows off their work so mm -hmm. well. Like, you know, like if I, again, if I was like a art director or something, like I, I know exactly, you know, like the style that I could get if I hired her. So oh, it's, exactly. it's so, they did a great job of uh, yeah let's see what this one is so like wonderfully done too where i think even when there's not a lot of extra copy added just the croppings the showing multiple different images per thing the whole yeah. thing here is to like make sure each each tile when you click on it is a little bit of a story right like uh it, tell us a little bit about it give us a little bit of that insight and there's some really good stuff there to kind of see here's some more packaging oh wow look at that um that like marbling that's beautiful. that's really something else Great yeah stuff. and even in the business cards it looks like there was like a a tonal marble oh going right on, here which yeah which is like a nice touch that's really wonderful let's see what else we got here great little mark nice emblem there love it 
Oh yeah. Those are hard to do too. I, oh. I've tried to like actually do some of the, um, is it called like a monogram? Monogram. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And it's, they, they're a lot harder than they look. I feel like you would think that like, I oh, know. You can just stack these letters on top of each other. It's like, no way you have to really, really, There's really an art to that. And, that, and yeah. I always get, I always get it with the initials. None of them are symmetrical, right? They're all like, <laughs> They're yeah. oh, oh. It's like a nightmare. You're like it's like yeah, everything you see is like an M and an O right. and an S. Like like it does not work. <laughs> this is great. Such good content. Really mm. neat stuff. Um, go give Amber a follow. Some really nice stuff here to take a look at. Again, she's based in Los Angeles. Um, really nice to see. Award winning. Um, been on brand new. Great to see this stuff. I think too, like um, even just writing up a fun little bio, once you do it once guys, you're done. Like yeah. you, you, if you ever ask for it again, you have something really nice to kind of um, to, to hand out there. It's one of those things I really uh, stress every creative to do. And if you need some help with it, reach out to a friend that might be a copywriter um, that can help you out with that, you know? Yeah, that's such a good point. And even I do feel like just the more that you can like put yourself out there on the internet, the better. Um, even if you kind of feel like you're reiterating things and like you probably think like, oh, people probably know like what I do or um, whatnot. It's just like, you you never know. You just, you, it's, it's better to just really uh, just share your work. Even if you don't know if it's um, ready or not. Like I, I'm, I'm a big proponent of just putting stuff out there um, yeah. on the internet because- how, how often is that a part of your, like even your week or your, maybe even down to your day? I mean, are you can put putting aside a time for that to be, to put put work out there a lot? Well, yeah, so I, I mean, it's funny. I'm, I'm definitely, uh, I love this quote where it's, uh, one of my professors in college actually said this, where he was like, be a factory, not a warehouse. So mm. kind of like, don't, uh, don't be too like precious about your work. Uh, like if, you know, cause sometimes we'll be like, Oh, I don't know if it's perfect or ready or whatnot. It's just like, you know, this is what I made today. Like let's share it. Yeah. Um, and so I do kind of try to take that mindset. Like I, I really, um, I try to post a couple times a week, especially on Instagram. And then I try to update like any portfolio websites I have, like as maybe bigger projects are finished. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I don't spend a lot of time posting. Like, I mean, I, I take like a minute or two, you know, like, so it's not like, you know, I'm not pouring over hours into like social media. Um, but I am just trying to be like, you know, as I'm working, I'll take a break for a second. Be like, Oh, today I made this and just push it out there. Um, because I've honestly found over the years that a lot of times things that I like wasn't sure about or, you know, kind of felt like more of like a sketch or whatnot. Um, I've had art directors come to me and say, like, we found this on your uh, you know, Instagram and like we want something like this. And, you know, it's even the thing that like gets the least amount of likes or whatever. <laughs> it, it, like, I feel like that's happened so many times where I'm like, no, I don't you know, I just want to show my work. I don't I'm not good. too concerned about a social media strategy, but it's just it's yeah. more so just just sharing what you're doing yeah. um, and, and re remove the, any being precious with it because I think yes. you're right. Uh, yeah. Sometimes it might be that odd random one that you almost didn't post <laughs> that finds its way to someone and they go, uh, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Right. right. Yeah. You never know. So it's better. Like I always say, like digital stuff is free, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, like you're, you're not paying for Instagram. I mean, I guess with advertisements, you yeah. are. <laughs> <laughs> but in that sense, you know, like I'm not, I don't know. It's just, it's better to use it than not. So yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, this was great. Awesome to look at Amber's work. Love that. I gave it a follow. Uh, hopefully you guys will too. Um, I'm going to even reach out. We're in the same city. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta know each other here. This is great. Love seeing this new, new great talent to kind of discover. So let's, um, we've got about 20 minutes left, a little shy, 20 minutes left. Why don't we take a look and see where we're at with your illustrator. For, I'm sorry, we are now in Photoshop, correct? Uh, yes, we just transitioned over to Photoshop. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get in here and um, hopefully kind of quickly put together um, the finishing touches. Great. Uh, so yeah, let me get into this can design and um, 
yeah, we'll just kind of start plugging away um, and uh, see how this mock-up is working. Let's go check it out. <laughs> yeah, so these, uh, uh, someone had asked about the mock-up thing. There's so many different options to it. I've noticed people who've made them themselves. I know you can purchase them anywhere. There's a ton on like Adobe stock as well. Mm -hmm. um, and they plug right into Photoshop. And then again, you, you'll see how easy Lisa's doing it. She'll just plug in the double click area of the smart object, drop in the flat art from Illustrator, and then boom, you get it all nicely shaded and, and, and round and cylinder ready to go for a mock-up. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we were kind of talking about this, uh, yesterday, but I did, um, and I think I, I saw someone in the chat ask um, where I got this uh, mock-up from, but I, I think I did purchase it on like PSD mock-ups or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, and then I, I I have customized it a little bit. So I think there was like three cans and I duplicated it to make five. And then there are some different like up in here in the layers panel. Um, I have adjusted some of like the levels to the shadows and whatnot. Um, and I, yeah, I, I have found like sometimes with like darker um, designs or lighter designs, I kind of have to play with the shadows a little bit because it doesn't always translate um, perfectly. But uh, overall, it, it is really nice to have. Uh, and the client, sure. clients love being able to see uh, the end product. So I, I would say it's worth the, you know, 20 bucks or... Oh, yeah. <laughs> what not um just add it to somewhere add it somewhere in those fees you know <laughs> yeah totally totally i i gotta put it in the upfront too because you know you're going to be using them and I, i've i've no longer show clients anything on the in anything flat until mm. we are at that stage of they've bought into the design and now we're actually doing everything the upc the you know um all the the back side of something so if it's an initial new design I'm showing them the front and a rendering only and, and really get the buy off from there. Oh, um, nice. Cause I noticed too, when you show them the flat, to be honest with you too, sometimes, you know, you could take the most simplest of art, right. And put it mm -hmm. on a can and it looks 10 times better. So imagine right. if it's your art that you've really crafted nicely and now you put it on the mock-up, it will sell it to them so much better. I, I love that tactic. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and again, it's different. Like if you're, if you're doing anything that's like in real life, sort of like a tangible, uh, three dimensional product. So whether it's, um, you know, designing, uh, hats or hoodies or sweaters or, you know, like whatever it is, it's just, um, you really do even for your own, uh, sake, like want to see like how that looks, um, in real life, because what what looks good flat doesn't always work uh, exactly. <laughs> when it has some dimension, and so it's helpful as well for like me as the designer to to see is this working? Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if we might have the time to do dimension. We were talking about that mm. yesterday. Yeah. Um, and it's a whole you know there's so many great um, tutorials on the Creative Cloud, folks. If you're looking for it. Um, I did one back with Dimension a while back, and I know Alex Lazarus did one where him and I um, went through two days, and I think he made, he was on a rampage. He was just taking <laughs> quotes from chat and making a, um, a, a seltzer water flavor on that. And I think he made something like 18 cans in the, in the two days. It was oh, just this nonstop, yeah. just like all about quantity uh and that his quality <laughs> is still really amazing so uh take a look at those and you'll see the the technique with what what's it's really up to you guys on how you mess around with this and still feeling very strong and familiar when i use my photoshop mock-ups for sure but when i want to get something in a, a complete custom angle or with a different backdrop or in a in a studio setting that i really can control everything firing up dimension is it's quite an easy, incredible thing to do. And it's it's all based on the stuff you save to your library. So when Lisa was making her her art and she had it in Illustrator, just saving it to a library allows her to take that and now import it into Dimension right on these models. And you have some really cool stuff to show off. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I did download Dimension. So um, in case we did have a couple. Oh, OK, let's minutes, yeah, let's see uh, how we're doing. Yeah, we, it'd be we kind definitely... of fun to see one of them. We could do one really quick for sure. <laughs> yeah, and I'll be the guinea pig since it'll be yeah. my first time uh, trying it out. Oh, yeah. 
you'll be you'll be uh, <laughs> you'll be hooked. It's really something else. That's awesome. Yes, yeah, so I do want to just kind of quickly grab a background. I, I do think we'll be able to do this. I'm gonna yeah. do this quick. So I'm just gonna copy this. Yeah, I agree. A few people said they would buy this just for the design. And I think that's the ultimate compliment from designers, right? Like that's awesome. How many times have we bought stuff that we didn't even need, but we bought it for the design <laughs> all the time. <laughs> uh, I'm, I am a sucker in tar Target or Whole Foods. Like it's just, right? I'm like, what is that? I must try it. <laughs> it's so good. That's so true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I love the idea of bringing in all these little guys in the background. Um, we talked yesterday about how important it is to help your, not only your, you out and all the assets you want to use for your, your portfolio, uh, for your social media posts for yourself, but doing these things has a double meaning because you, you can do these for the client and this oh, is yeah. extra stuff. Now I think my clients are so used to adding at the end of when we finish something, they're like, okay, can we talk renderings now? Cause I showed them one rendering that we did in, in illustr in a dimension and they instantly are like, do we get that now with everything? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, okay, there we go. Like, like, I, you know, it's eliminated photography. Um, when, when primarily let's say, like you said earlier, you don't, you don't in the same city with a lot of your clients, mm -hmm. sometimes them sending the samples to me and bringing them to the photographer I use, you're talking like three or four days. And right. when you can create something in dimension and it's photo, quality um you've eliminated all that time and steps so it's really helped out a lot and particularly uh even these cans like a lot of times when you have something that's a lot of white it's so hard to photograph right yeah that, that's a really good point you get too. every you get the that. light glare and and, yeah. and everything else and the super harsh reflections um and that's all controllable in dimension because it's like you literally are putting together a, a photo shoot like right on your screen that's awesome Nice. Yeah, we're looking good. This is looking great. Sure I grab. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that little bit. Oh, no, I didn't grab it all. <laughs> <laughs> I was realizing after I did this that these were not yet grouped. There we go. Ah, uh, perfect. Group him. You know what you should? Oh, you got a great opportunity. All of these things, you should make sticker sheets and and send them to your cousin and have them print them up because like, oh my gosh right yeah. the, i mean like the neat thing is is they're not they're kid friendly every everything right. you've done so far even though it's for a cider company um i know a lot of places are doing like some of the breweries we work with are doing coloring books like we've been doing uh coloring pages that we can give to the kids when they're there and and they have something to do uh it's so, so it's so fun. cool right yeah and actually even like lost boy um so i mean my cousins they have three little kids so they right from the get-go they actually did want to make it pretty kid friendly um yeah. and they, yeah yeah so it's uh it definitely has that type of environment like it's not like super rowdy or anything gotcha um, so that's that is a good uh a good call i'll definitely have to talk with tristan about that that's a great idea <laughs> try it yeah uh, one of the restaurants we just finished they they, we made all of these really great caricatures based off of the vegetables because it's like a plant-based, um, really gr uh, organic health food store or, mm. uh, or restaurant. Mm -hmm. And so the sticker sheet we did was fun. So it's we found all the, you know, there's all those really bad vegetable puns that are out there. Oh, yeah. You know, like, I, you know, I can't be beat and like, right. you know, you know. <laughs> funny things like that. Oh, snap. And it was like with a snap pee. Um, totally. And so we put together the fun little sticker sheet and the owner was like, uh, he, he, I don't even think he called. He just went right to the printer. He's like, oh, we have to make these. <laughs> this, is, this is so cool. That's awesome. So do you do a lot of packaging in like the food industry mainly? Is that I'd say like it's all, yeah, it's all food and beverage. Pays. And then yeah. uh, those are the two big pillars. And then the third is re like restaurant design. So like helping up helping the company right from the very beginning even helping naming it the branding oh, wow. and then and then how does what's the experience like you know even like uh learning from a lot of folks that have been doing it for a long time is you know telling the story of like as you walk in what's the first thing that greets them like you know um mm -hmm. on their exit what's 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 telling them to come back and little things like that and how are you telling the brand story in the environment um it's like a whole other area to think about design which is great 
That's super cool. What what's like one of your favorite names that like has been chosen for oh, naming the restaurant? Oh gosh, that's I, a big. Uh, the current one's called like the current one's called Chop It Up. They, they, they so okay. everything about it is all chopped. Everything's about it. It's like salads and bowls and wraps and things like that. Um, and we had some fun with all the different like uh, sayings and the uh, two murals inside the store. Um, one of the cool things too was that. Uh, the, the brewery we finished a few years ago was originally going to be titled something that the, the owners loved and no one really kind of cared for it. It just didn't have the, the zing or the ring that we were looking for mm. and digging more into the story of what inspired him to do it. It was all based on this pirate ship um, and all of the documents he had was his great, great, great grandfather was the captain of this ship. And the name oh, wow. of the ship was a little weird. So when we looked into it, we found that the characteristic of the ship was that it was it had it was a 14 cannon brigade, and that was a, it was a warship. And 14 cannons became the name because one, it was easily memorable, easily spellable, right? Um, no one else owned it, anything like that, and it was easy to remember all that all that stuff, and it tied back to the story. So that is so cool. They it's really, like, it's just become such a good thing from this point on. And now everything's built off of that, that whole brand archetype. Wow. And that's such like a personal story too. Like, yeah. that. it's like his great grandfather, did he say? Those are yeah, like, like great, great, great or something. I can't oh, remember. Wow. It's like talking like this uh, 1800s, I think it was like 1875 oh, wow. um, was when it went back to. And then that led to the, we found a muralist who painted a beautiful mural of the ship inside the brewery. And that tells the story of the name. So they were, they were like, no one has to ask because the story is right there on the main wall. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah. And people love stories. Like, I mean, that's like, it's such like a human yeah. thing. And, yeah. You, know, you can really rally behind that. If it if a story resonates with you and exactly yeah, branding Ooh, so important. we are getting we're, we're like almost ready here we got oh, about four yes. minutes look at us go you okay. just did it in perfect timing tell <laughs> us like show this off this looks fantastic that yes. looks great well I, yeah I, I think that this is pretty much good to go so I think uh, yeah we we have our feel the beat. Uh, January hard cider design with pomegranates and beets and just uh, having that kind of, I think it, it does feel like a wintry vibe with the white and blues, like it's got, kind of got this cold feel. Um, I like that, but, without being icy and all that, like with yeah. icicles dangling from it, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. But then you have these fun surprises of just these funny, quirky beets and pomegranates that are just stoked to you know, just be alive. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, if chat wants to chime in with a quick name for the beat and a quick name for the pomegranate Ooh. character, go for it. We've got yes. like two minutes left, so give it a shot. But okay. I love how this again, all came out. You're, you showed such a great process flow. So when the next one comes around, you probably are going to even find more shortcuts every time you're doing this, right? Oh yeah, totally. And it's, um, yeah, it is nice to kind of have, have it really honed in um, because it, it definitely took a, a few uh, tries, I guess, to, to figure mm -hmm. out what's working, what's not working. But now that I think I was saying this is, I think I've done about 10 of these so far, 10 months of the packaging where it's, it does feel like this is like a well-oiled machine. Uh, we know, you know, what to expect. I have the templates yeah. down, so. Oh, yeah. we got our first one, Upbeat for the beat. Uh, <laughs> Beatrice, love I love um, it. That's great. Beatrice beast mode. There we go. Cause we got to stick with the, we got to stick with the workout regiment here for sure. Yes. But where can, where can folks find you? Where are you posting the most? Give them a, a few things there. Yeah. So definitely follow me on Instagram. That is my, uh, you know, my, my daily weekly posting, um, platform. So my Instagram is at made by Lisa Marie. Um, and also on Behance, I'm there. Um, on under Lisa McCormick, which is more of just my formal name, but I'm either Perfect. Lisa McCormick or made by Lisa Marie. Um, and also my uh, uh, website is, is www.madebylisamarie. Perfect. So that has all my, all my stuff on there. Excellent. Make sure you give her a follow guys. This has been great with you, Lisa. Um, folks, stay tuned. We've got XD Creative challenges with Jesse Showalter coming up right after this and then a draw along with Kyle T. Webster, uh, 2.30 p.m. Pacific. 
tomorrow. Don't forget, we have master classes, uh, some of the evangelists, and the new season of Office Hours at 2.30 p.m. Pacific with me and Andrew Hockrattle. That'll be tomorrow, Friday. Again, great to work with you, Lisa. Can't wait to see what you do after this, and I'll be following you as well. Hopefully, everybody else will. Um, this has yeah, been thanks, great. Thanks so much, Nick. This is so fun. I love being able to spend time uh, with, with you and everyone in the chat over the last two days, and um, yeah, hope to work together again. Excellent. That's great. All right, guys, we'll have a great rest of the day Bye. and we'll see you all soon. Thanks for joining us.